why Audrey Hepburn struggled with love for so many years. Audrey Hepburn was heartbroken twice before she found true love. A look back at the actress's complex romances and affairs. As one of the biggest actresses to reach stardom in the 1950s and 60s, the gamine Audrey Hepburn was often seen as a contrast to the bombshell Marilyn Monroe, with her slim physique and fawn-like face making it easy for Hollywood to label her the anti-Marilyn. But though the Belgian actress seemed like a hopeless romantic, Hepburn still had her fair share of tumultuous loves and Hollywood affairs though unlike the Sleeping With Sirens song suggests, she was never in a relationship with James Dean. What destiny has in store for us is always a surprise. Whether it's heartbreak or true love, nobody knows. Iconic actress Audrey Hepburn had endured heartbreak twice due to failed marriages to actor Mel Ferrer and psychiatrist Andrea Dotti before finding lasting love. Nobody can force love into our lives, it will come to us only when our hearts are open to it, which is what happened with the humanitarian and actress. Here a deeper look at Hepburn's complex love life. In 1952, James Hansen. While filming her first major motion picture, Roman Holiday, alongside To Kill a Mockingbird's Gregory Peck, Hepburn split her time between shooting and planning her nuptials to British businessman James Hansen. The wealthy, soon-to-be lord, was excited to marry the budding Hollywood star, but Hepburn, who had her doubts, decided to call off the wedding despite having several fittings with designer Zoe Fontana for a custom ivory satin wedding gown featuring a tiny waist and a boat neck front. Nineteen fifty four, Mel Furrer. A year later Hepburn became an overnight star after the success of Roman Holiday. In 1953, at the film's British opening, Hepburn was introduced to Mel Furrer, an actor and stage and film director, at a party. At the time, Furrer was a twice-divorced father of four who was 12 years older than Hepburn, but despite the age difference, Hepburn came to like Furrer. In 1954, Hepburn returned to the stage to star with her new love in the Broadway play Ondine. The actress, then 24, was praised for her performance and received a Tony nomination for her role as a sprite in the production. Around the same time, Hepburn was also nominated for her first Academy Award for her work in Roman Holiday. The actress won both awards and also the Heart of Furrer, on September the 25th, 1954, the couple exchanged vows in an intimate ceremony in Switzerland. In a letter to her friend Sir Felix Aylmer, Hepburn wrote of her plans for the big day, telling Aylmer, How dearly we would love you to be with us on our wedding day. We will have the car take you up to our mountain peak, Friday, for a gathering in our chalet of our nearest and dearest. Saturday will be the wedding. We want to keep it a dark secret in order to have it without the press. After two years of marriage, Hepburn co-starred with her husband and Henry Fonda in the film adaptation of Leo Tolstoy's War and Peace. On June 17, 1960 in Lucerne, Switzerland, Hepburn gave birth to her first child, Sean Hepburn Furrer. Prior to Sean's birth, Hepburn had a difficult time getting pregnant, suffering from a miscarriage and a stillbirth after falling off a horse 
while shooting the film Unforgiven. While married to Furrer, Hepburn had a few dalliances, but it was no secret that Furrer did as well. Their infidelities damaged their relationship, and Furrer and Hepburn decided to end their 14-year marriage, formally announcing their divorce in November of 1968. nineteen fifty four William Holden. In addition to a new marriage and two awards in nineteen fifty four, Hepburn also stole the show in Billy Wilder's Sabrina, starring Humphrey Bogart and William Holden. The actress earned herself another Academy Award nomination for her role in the film, and also landed in a deep love affair with her co star. 1954 Bill. Though Hepburn loved Holden during the time of their affair, she desperately wanted marriage and children, and after learning that Holden had undergone a vasectomy, Hepburn officially put an end to their relationship. In the summer of 1962, Hepburn reunited with Holden for the film Paris When It Sizzles. When Holden arrived in Paris to shoot the movie, he famously said, I remember arriving at Orly Airport for Paris When It Sizzles. I could hear my footsteps echoing against the walls of the transit corridor, just like a condemned man walking the last mile. I realised that I had to face Audrey, and I had to deal with my drinking, and I didn't think I could handle either situation. Holden tried to win Hepburn over one last time during filming, but Hepburn was content in her marriage with Furrer at the time. Holden died in 1981 at the age of 63, the same age as Hepburn, who died in 1993. 1957 Robert Anderson Shortly after starring in War and Peace with her husband, Hepburn took a role in Fred Zinnemann's The Nun's Story. While filming, Hepburn grew close to the film's screenwriter, Robert Anderson, and the two reportedly had an affair. According to Audrey and Bill author Epstein, Hepburn heard rumours of Furrer's infidelities, which led to her decision to have an affair with Anderson. Nineteen sixty nine Andrea Dotti. Shortly after divorcing Furrer, Hepburn married once again. On January 18, 1969, she wed Italian psychiatrist neurologist Andrea Dotti, whom she had met on a cruise. After their wedding, the couple settled in Rome and enrolled Hepburn's son Sean in a bilingual school. Four months into her marriage, Hepburn became pregnant again. On February 8, 1970, at the age of 40, Hepburn gave birth to her second child, Luca Dotti was born. With the birth of her new son, the actress decided to take a break from Hollywood and devote her time to being a mother at La Pazible, her chalet in Tolkanaz, Switzerland. 1970. Hepburn's break from Hollywood was a tumultuous time for the new mother. While dealing with rumours of Dotti's inappropriate social life, including affairs with young women. Hepburn also experienced another miscarriage in 1974. By 1979, Dotty's affairs had grown increasingly more public, with his outings detailed in the press. Finally, in 1982, Dotty and Hepburn officially ended their more than 12-year marriage. 1979 Ben Gazzara. 
After leaving Hollywood for almost a decade, Hepburn returned to star in the film Bloodline with Ben Gazzara. Like William Holden and Robert Anderson before him, the married Gazzara was rumoured to also have an affair with Hepburn while shooting. According to Epstein, Hepburn and Gazzara's on-set fling was the result of both feeling trapped and unhappy in their marriages. Gazzara reportedly said, Audrey was unhappy in her marriage and hurting. I was unhappy in my marriage and hurting, and we gave solace to each other and we fell in love. But when filming ended, both returned to their unhappy marriages. In 1981, Hepburn teamed up with Gazzara again to shoot one of her final films. They all laughed, but this time she was in a relationship with her new love, Robert Volders. Nineteen eighty, Robert Volders. Hepburn found love with Dutch businessman and actor Robert Volders in nineteen eighty after meeting at a party. At the age of forty nine, she fell in love with Dutch born businessman Robert Volders, and the couple stayed together until her death, though they were never married. When two mature adults who are committed to each other decide to be together, their bond is enough proof of love. The couple was together for 13 years before she passed away in 1993 at the age of 63 from a rare cancer. 1990. We were ready for each other, Volders told people. At the time in our lives that we met, we had both made our mistakes. If chance would have had it, that we would have met at an earlier stage, we might not have had the discoveries together that we did have and found those things in life together that were valuable to us at a later point in life when we were both more mature," he added. In the late 1980s, Hepburn became more involved with UNICEF and in 1988 she was appointed as a UNICEF Goodwill Ambassador allowing her to tour the world and make appearances on UNICEF's behalf with Volders by her side. Hepburn died in 1993 and in 2002 UNICEF unveiled a bronze statue of a woman holding a child's hand called The Spirit of Audrey, dedicated to Audrey's work with the organisation. In honour of his late love, Volders opened the ceremony stating, Audrey personified the spirit of UNICEF, and we hope those that see this statue will be inspired by her efforts on behalf of our children. Though Volders and Hepburn never married, the two were truly passionate about each other and were together until Hepburn's death. Reflecting on Hepburn's death in a 1994 interview with People, Volders told the magazine, They say the pain lessens over time that's a crock. Audrey Hepburn is the proof that our soulmate arrives when we're ready. 